What happened? That's the question. There's a lot to unwrap here. I've learned more in the last 10 years, 2010 to 2020, than I have my entire life. And I'd also have to say that I've seen things in the last 10 years that I never thought that I'd see in my lifetime. And here we are in 2020, and who would have thought by the middle of the year, we'd be not only in a pandemic crisis, but a global pandemic. Of course, out of that a economic crisis, because of it, it's on the level of perhaps the 1930s, potentially, because so many people were forced to go home, be laid off because of the need to be isolated and because of the contagiousness of the virus, COVID-19. 40 to 50 million people lost their, their jobs and applied for unemployment just since March. Many people, still millions of people, really hadn't recovered from the economic downturn of the 2008. Because then they lost homes, they lost retirement, they lost savings that they never recovered. And now here we are with another crisis on a much larger scale because of the pandemic. Millions of people have been affected by COVID-19. Hundreds of thousands have died so far. So the quarantine was necessary. They're still learning more about the nature of the virus and what potentially could happen in the future as other strains develop. And many societies were just not prepared, not for testing, not for supplies, not for workforces. The first actions towards solving it were stimulus bills involving trillions of dollars that primarily went to billionaires and mega millionaires. There's still people waiting for one $1,200 stimulus check, which they're still probably gonna to have to pay taxes on eventually anyway. It's crazy. What, I don't know what other word to say. Now we have more social injustice as people have been feeling cooped up in their homes because of the, the pandemic uh, quarantine. Yet another person of color is literally lynched in the streets, this time Minneapolis by a police officer like Eric Garner, who was uttering, I can't breathe, in his last words. It caused such an outrage that at least hundreds of protests, peaceful protests for the most part, have happened, not only in Minneapolis, but in cities like Philadelphia, Los Angeles, even in Hollywood, it's reported over 100,000 people gathered to protest and even to celebrate the life of George Floyd. There are so many now that have been literally lynched in the streets that we could create a, a war memorial type of tribute is what has been, has been done to those who lost their lives in military wars. So many problems that have not been addressed for so long and now here we are, things coming to a head in a very short period of time. So what's next? I haven't even mentioned the environmental crisis, but over 400 parts per million in the car carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We're going in the wrong direction there as well. We really shouldn't be driving our cars so much. 2018, I produced a documentary called The Roots of Society and the Enlightenment of Solutions for the purpose of this very kind of thing, to identify issues and problems and then primarily find solutions, how to go, go forward and solve them. It's gonna require that we work together though. It's gonna take us all to participate. Since that documentary, I've talked to, to even more people who've added their insight and knowledge as to what to do to address these the various problems where they have their expertise and experience. That's what this little short video film is about. Corporations are being advised, focus on the world, the parts of the world that are growing, where your market will expand, where you can participate in growth and therefore see rising profits and do well. And the United States isn't that place. It's over. We are living in a period of American history that is very strange. We're, it's over, but we are all, even those of us in this room, engaged in a massive, a massive process of denial. Nor is it surprising. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you down. Denial is an understandable reaction to a difficult reality.
always has been. You know that from your own personal life. <laughs> Think about it. So what do you do? What do you do? How do you handle a situation like this as a society? I find uh, conversations like this and music and cultural things. I'm working cultural and economic transition because that's where I see the hope. And, and having conversations like this with people on all levels, celebrities, regular people, homeless people on the street, I don't care. Every, everyone has a soul. That's what I see the hope is. What, how, would, how do you think your father would look at all this that's going on right now? Well, you know, he made a decision, I th a, a personal and creative decision to become the person who disengaged from the species. You know, he decided to walk away from it all. When he did The Planet is Fine, that was in 1992 on his Jammin' in New York show. And it was, it was very controversial because, you know, it was, he wasn't saying don't try to save the planet, but he was saying the only reason you're trying to save the planet is because you're trying to save your life, your convenient life. Like, let's just get real about it. <laughs> Ego. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you're trying to save it so that you are not inconvenienced anymore. And if you really want to save the planet, then we would stop driving cars Yes. And we would stop eating beef. We have a jobs emergency and we have a climate emergency. We can only fix them together. So we call for the creation of 20 million jobs, like the New Deal, where we created millions of jobs in a matter of months, actually. This time, those jobs will also transition our economy to clean renewable energy, to a healthy, uh, local organic food system and to public transportation. It turns out we also get healthy in the process here because we clean up the pollution that kills 200,000 people a year and um, and we have healthy food and we've got public transportation. It's, you know, it's like what's not to love about this picture. What we do in the Eco-Socialist Green New Deal is say we got to do what we did during World War II where the federal government either built or took over from companies like GM and Ford 25% of the manufacturing capacity in order to turn industry on a dime into what they called the arsenal of democracy to defeat the fascists. And we need to do nothing less for climate change. So in addition to the public power sector, we want uh, a national railroad corporation to build electrified freight rails, uh, electrified high-speed bullet trains between the cities and within the cities the light rail trolley systems. Like we got a trolley track going yeah, right by us. Right here, exactly. LA had the largest trolley system in the world yeah. and by a conspiracy of the auto and oil and rubber companies, uh, you know, bought it out, tore it up and, and put them dependent on buses. Arrange the challenges in which we face in terms of what's a priority. Everything's important. We have to think holistically about those challenges. So. Um, the degradation of the planet, that's a, that's, that is, it should concern all of us. War and the United States uh, un, unbearable imperialism, that's a problem. Uh, trade laws that don't allow for workers' rights, human rights, environmental quality principles. We, we need to change that. Uh, there, there are, uh, the, the fact that so many young people can't get a decent education. All of these things should concern, concern us. And we have to have the ability to be able to hold uh, uh, multiple goals simultaneously and pursue uh, a, a newer world uh, without saying, well, this, first we've got to take care of this and then we take care of that. No, there's so many different things that we have to work on simultaneously. And I think we're capable of doing that. I'm an advocate for worker cooperatives. I believe that the UK Labor Party's manifesto has democratized the economy, has some really good ideas in it about how to allow the workers to be owners, you know, the right of first uh, uh, refusal, you know, to actually buy a company out together as workers. Yeah. What do you think about that as a long-term solution going forward for our country? I think worker cooperatives are phenomenal. Um, and the more of that sort of structure we have, the better off we'd be. That's one thing I, I love about the Freedom Dividend is that workers having that sort of ownership stake becomes much more realistic in an economy where people all are sharing in the rewards and have some resources to bring to the table. Where the worker subsistence model is just going to get more and more punishing. And so we have to make 
owners out of everyone of this society. That's one reason why it's called the freedom dividend, because that's what owners receive when they own shares of a company. They receive a dividend, and we are the owners and shareholders of this country. We should get a dividend, and that would put more workers in position to become owners of various businesses. And the more we develop those kinds of businesses, like solar and wind and hydropower, I mean, it becomes obvious this is the commons that we all actually, we're building this wealth, this wealth that you're talking about. We all built together. So let's talk. Let's come together. Let's find solutions. Let's create more democracy in our society, more compassion in our society, more democracy and compassion in the workplace. There needs to be more ownership by the workers themselves, as well as democracy, because they can contribute to the actual productivity, to the creation of the wealth that exists. Why shouldn't they get greater participation in decision-making and and ownership of that well. They should. We should talk about it. Let's come together. Let's do this. The time is now. Capitalism has been dominant for 250 years. It has never solved economic crisis. Roosevelt made speech after speech at which he said, my policies will not only get us out of the Great Depression, but they will make sure that no future downturn like this will afflict our children. That was a promise he made, but he could not keep. Every president since Roosevelt, including Obama, has promised the same solution. The solution is to not leave in, in power inside the corporation, the system that now exists there, because that was the problem. That was not changed in the Great Depression, so we're back in another one. That was not changed in a way that would prevent our cities being destroyed, our children's education undermined. Stop, we have to do that. What would it mean? The best way to describe it, slogan that I use, democratize the enterprise. Finally bring to the enterprise the commitment to democracy we're supposed to be committed to in this country. The factories, the offices, and the stores can and should be run collectively and democratically by the people who work there. Very few people really, are what you would call the source of the problem. There are always going to be the provocateurs and instigators and the infiltrators of peaceful protests trying to draw attention away from what the greater problems are that need to be solved in our world and in our societies. Let's focus on the real solutions bring people together peacefully and thoughtfully, we can do this. Take care, be safe, peace. Truth is always to allow suffering to speak. Suffering from wherever it comes. We are an inclusive group. Yes, we come against the grain, but it's our common humanity. So yes, we are open to prophetic Mormon brothers and sisters if they believe that corporate greed ought to be eliminated. That's right. Give the prophetic Mormon brothers and sisters a hand right now if they want to come here and join the movement. We're here for, for the progressive, agnostic, and atheistic brothers and sisters. Come and join the movement. That's right. Even for prophetic black Baptists like myself. I'm here too. I saw a picture of Brother Martin Luther King Jr. Put it back up again. Show Brother Martin. Where is Brother Martin? Somebody put Brother Martin's picture up. That's part of our legacy too. For our prophetic Jewish brothers and sisters, come and fight corporate greed. This is part of the movement. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, come join the movement. Buddhist brothers and sisters, come join the movement. We cut against the grain. Because corporate greed cuts across national boundaries, and we know we got to cut radically against the grain, and that's why it's a blessing for me to be here. No, I saw the same thing in New York, Occupy Boston, as well as Occupy LA. The focus is on corporate greed, 
It talks about individual liberty. It talks about social justice. It talks about democratic accountability, especially the 1% who own 40% of the wealth. 